nature is incredible at cycling resources such as water, carbon, dead leaves and even animal droppings. Repurposing every element, every material and every energy it produces. Nothing goes to waste. Instead, it all helps to fuel new life while maintaining a balance within the planetary ecosystem. In theory, we know of nature's brilliance. But instead of acknowledging and designing to live in harmony with it, we're constantly going in the opposite direction. With the ever-increasing global population, along with housing, food and healthcare demands, the relationship between us and nature is constantly deteriorating. But if we are to tackle climate change across every region and sector of our society, we cannot continue building in the manner we have till date. We must find ways of constructing our environment differently. Intrigued and challenged by this, I am a bioarchitect at UCL's Biointegrated Design Lab, a hybrid between biology and architecture, where we are finding ways to build cities as if they were nature itself, by designing buildings that can absorb carbon, clean water and air while producing energy, all with the help of natural processes. Our approach begins from the molecular level, where we develop new living materials that are suitable for the growth of other organisms. We then develop new tools of designing and fabrication in order to build large-scale components from those living materials for use in our cities. Behind the scenes, our lab is made up of designers, architects, biologists, biochemical engineers and material scientists where we all collectively work to embed nature and its biological systems within each step of the architectural process. Let me explain this further to you with the help of three examples where biology and architecture are beginning to work in harmony with each other in order to collectively better our environment. The World Economic Forum ranks water as the number one factor for the climate crisis. Approximately 80% of the surface and ground water across the globe remains contaminated. Reason? The lack of suitable water treatment solutions that are cost effective and energy efficient. We wondered if we could design a solution that could empower local communities to treat and reuse the polluted water for their daily activities. We collaborated with Dr. Brenda Parker, a biochemical engineer at UCL, who had been researching the potential of treating polluted water from a living organism, a humble microalgae. Did you know that a cell of microalgae has the natural ability to absorb heavy metals, such as cadmium, arsenic, and nickel? Engineers have been using this for decades to clean polluted water. However, all these technologies are extremely expensive and demand high maintenance. We developed a low-cost living material, a biomaterial that acts as a host for the microalgae, allowing the cells to grow within the material itself. Three-dimensional tiles with vein-like channels were designed to hold the new algal biomaterial. These tiles could then be assembled into a vertical wall system where the water is poured into the inlets present at the top of the wall, trickling over the wall surface, allowing the microalgal cells to absorb the pollutants present in the polluted water, leaving behind buckets of cleaner water which could be reused at site. A bio wall we call INDIS. Our lab experiments have successfully shown the biomaterial to reduce the concentration of cadmium by 10 folds within 30 to 45 minutes, illustrating the impact designing with living materials can make within a local community scale. Our lab experiments were also showing that as the microalgae grows within the material by performing photosynthesis, it also produces small amounts of electrons. We began wondering if we could use the green biomaterial to produce small amounts of energy for use in remote areas such as refugee shelters and bus stops. This initiated a collaboration with Dr. Paolo Bombelli, a bioelectrical engineer at Cambridge University, 
who had been working to extract energy from living organisms, such as algae and moss. We designed 3D cells that could hold the algal biomaterial, along with a conducting material made from waste aluminium mesh. Multiple cells were then connected to create sufficient current to light up an LED bulb or a digital clock. Now that we've explored water pollution and energy, let's look at air pollution and the importance of increasing biodiversity within our concrete cityscapes. A lot of you might have already seen walls and roofs constructed to grow plants. The idea is brilliant. However, these plants demand constant watering, pruning and long-term maintenance, which consume energy and are costly. So we began questioning if we could alter our existing building materials, such as concrete and brick, to passively grow algae, mosses and lichens. Species that are resilient and can easily grow in different regions, while absorbing pollutants from the air. Professor Marcus Cruz at UCL had already been researching this idea by tailoring materials such as microporous concrete and GRC limestone concrete. We then introduced the algal biomaterial to the surface of his material compositions as a source for nutrients, while also accelerating the growth of other organisms, showing that we can alter our existing building materials to perform natural processes, as opposed to using completely new materials. As a bio-architect, what is extremely challenging but interesting is that the human is not my only subject of design. Instead, organisms and species are equally a part of the habitat we envision, forcing us to think on a nano and micro scale while creating and fabricating structures that are macro scale. Our aim is to design a future city where we blur the boundaries between our man-made structures and natural green spaces, tackling climate change by building a new relationship between man and nature.